I would start with Stella. I know Stella, you are uh, you are a representative of the entity responsible for the equality assurance in Moldova, and you were a participant in the in the peer visit. So, can you tell me in brief your first reflections on the event when you first arrived compared to the previous event in Tunisia? Um, actually, uh, this was the first time that I took part in this event, in the peer visit uh, uh, activity that is organized by, by the ETF. Um, and um, I was really uh, pleased and um, actually very much interested and in looking forward to this event because I uh, really wanted to know how it goes and uh, how people feel, how I would feel in, in, in this context. So, um, and I wanted, uh, actually, my idea was to share uh, from our experience, to learn from other people's experience and to share our experience uh, the same, because, you know, uh, the ETFK forum uh, is also a platform uh, for um, disseminating other, uh, other institutions' uh, activities, so, so that we get to know each other very much better. So, and, uh, um, of course, when we arrived there, um, uh, we already had some insight uh, before uh, going to Budva because uh, just before that, on the 19th of May, we uh, also had uh, an online uh, visit. So that was part of this uh, activity as well. So and uh, um, actually, it was really nice meeting uh, the people, uh, talking to them face to face because, you know, uh, face to face communication is uh, always a much better experience rather than when you are uh, stuck in uh, time, time limits uh, somewhere online. So you have the possibility to, to chat over, um, uh, over this uh, period of time that is uh, granted for, for, for the interviews. So I think that the expectations that I had before visiting uh, and uh, during the visit and after the visit, so they, they were completely met. Interesting. So turning now to Pechaber, I hope I'm pronouncing the name at least quite correct. So you, it, you did it successfully, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. So uh, I'm I'm wondering if you attended the first uh, peer visit in Tunisia. Yeah, actually, um, yes. Like Stella, it was my first time I participated in a peer visit. I think uh, the somebody from Georgia participated first time in the peer visit, so um, I cannot really compare it to what happened in, 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 in Indonesia. But uh, um, actually, I absolutely agree with Stella. It was a very interesting experience, and uh, <clears throat> especially the methodology which was designed, as we learned later with the participation of Montenegrin uh, colleagues, uh, seems to be quite uh, constructive and uh, very targeted to the final uh, results, what is expected. Uh, of course, we had some uh, recommendations, maybe what would be uh, good to be considered in the next peer visits, but generally it was quite uh, well organized and um, I think that Montenegro colleagues will benefit from this. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. So based on your on your visit, Kahaber, so what what comes to your mind when you think about the policy interventions? Like when you checked the experience of uh, of the Montenegro of the colleagues in Montenegro, what policy recommendations or po or policy responses that you think of as necessary and that they that you can recommend to them? Um, actually, we provided our recommendations at the peer visit. The last day was dedicated to the uh, presentations, and uh, I had the honor uh, as well as Stella to be a presenters of. Uh, subgroup uh, findings. Um, uh, what comes in mind uh, at the moment is that uh, very good, uh, what is very good start for, for uh, and we have to congratulate our Montenegrin uh, colleagues that they have uh, institutions in place who has to do this. They have the regulatory framework and they have the methodology and they have standards. Uh, actually, it would be uh, very nice to work also on the improvement on this uh, 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 so there, are, there were several issues what we recommended on the uh, system level uh, from the methodological uh, point of view. And uh, one of the most important was to include as much as 
um, the, uh, as external evaluators to include uh, more private sector representatives. And because they are limited with the representatives of the formal education system, usually external evaluators are uh, teachers from other uh, educational institutions. And since uh, the country is relatively small and everybody knows everybody, um, this is very uh, hard to guarantee the, uh, the, the, the objective. Uh, I think uh, they, are, uh, they are successful in this issue, but uh, we would recommend, uh, so we would recommend it actually, to include the private sector rep representatives so to open the scope and uh, um, uh, to, 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 to invite uh, people from outside, because since the vocational education mainly serves the private sector development uh, in the country. So it would be very good that if they are involved in the educational standard elaboration, if they are also included with the assessment of the country's uh, vocational education system, and which brings to the mutual trust and more trust to their vocational qualifications within the country, since they are the ones who participate in the process. So, uh, and regarding um, maybe uh, the, the, the regulated professions as uh, medical education and other regulated areas, even to think to involve international, uh, let's say external assessors or expertise in this. Um, this was the, the, the biggest one that uh, was actually missing and was, was quite uh, clear for us, which will improve the system itself. And uh, another was uh, actually it was Stella's finding, Stella's group's finding, but she she will she will say about it more uh, about uh, uh, indicators of the quality, quality indicators, more clarification, more outcome-based indicators because they are, uh, uh, according to our opinion, slightly subjective. They can be assessed uh, more or less subjectively. So uh, actually, this. Uh, uh, and also there are other recommendations, uh, of course, uh, bigger or minor, but uh, to me, it is very important, whatever, whatever I, I just mentioned, yes. Thank you, Karl uh, Turning to Stella, I want to ask you about the Quality Assurance Forum in itself as a mechanism or um, as a system in which actors come together and share their feedback and, and, and contribute to peer learning. What's on your mind when it comes to developing the way the, the Quality Assurance Forum itself works? Like we have been working for two or three years and there has been COVID and there has been many disruptions. What ideas do you have on your mind so that the Quality Assurance Forum becomes more effective, more efficient in delivering its message? Uh, so uh, actually, uh, um, for the time being, so we are not uh, for a very long time part of the QA forum, but uh, we uh, have noticed that uh, uh, it's uh, the, the forum is actually doing a, a great work in bre uh, building these bridges between uh, different uh, countries and the systems uh, and uh, um, uh, bringing the expertise from uh, from the different countries. Uh, so. Um, I think that uh, maybe um, uh, so just to, to uh, uh, I know that you are uh, putting a lot of effort in uh, making this uh, uh, forum visible and um, uh, probably uh, one idea would be to um, uh, actually try involve more uh, countries at the European level as well from the EU. Um, so like, I don't know, Estonia or I don't know, Germany or what other countries <laughs> as well, so that they can bring their expertise uh, in this regard. So, yeah, at, at this very moment, so I, I, I'd like to to, uh, to actually to broaden uh, the, the, the number of participants in the forum. Okay, that would be an important recommendation to, to think about. So, so turning back to Kachaber, you talked about uh, in your recommendation that there, there should be more focus uh, pay to methodologies and also more focus uh, on the curricula uh, and the way these methodologies are being developed. Did you did you see like positive engagement from uh, from the colleagues in Montenegro? Like did you see like this activeness or engagement in receiving the feedback that you're you were putting out there? 
Um, yes. Uh, uh, so before I answer your question, I will I will add something to the question to Stella yes. from from our country context. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, our open um, policy of uh, of our country is to work towards the EU integration, since we consider ourselves as a as a, as a uh, part of the uh, EU. Um, uh, uh, Let's say culture uh, and then the family. Uh, unfortunately, we are limited to be a member of ECAWET, uh, uh, let's say, system because it's open for the member states only. And in these terms, when we seek uh, international uh, assistance and advice within the vocational education and training, this forum actually was a very good source to share the experience and to interpret properly whatever was uh, proposed by ECAVET system and other systems, which is uh, actually more open for the EU member states until we become the EU member state. So this is a very good, uh, let's say, guide for us to uh, go uh, to, 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 to work to the, the proper, uh, proper target in this area. So this is how we, we consider this membership. We are very keen to uh, be more actively involved in that. Um, and uh, yeah. This is our context. Now, regarding your question is that uh, Montenegrin system of uh, new system of uh, quality assurance was relatively new. They just adopted it in, in 2020. And I had the expectations that uh, they more or less were looking for the validation of uh, existing newly introduced system. Now, since uh, most of the institutions and most of the experts have not yet participated in the processes under new regulation, uh, they don't have now clear evidences so far how this system actually works because they have to implement at least one cycle of uh, uh, the quality assurance under the new um, uh, regulations. Therefore, considering this issue, we were also very careful recommending something new because they have to take these decisions according to the evidence base. So they don't yet have generated evidences, but they were very keen and very careful when listening to our recommendations. And actually, they explained that most of them uh, were not reflected in the regulations, but actually it was the practice. But there are also some recommendations like, like uh, digitalization of the process uh, because they have to submit lots of papers back and forth. And our recommendation was, why don't you digitalize this process and simplify and you gain time and resources? And they liked it. They accepted it immediately. So I think that um, they really benefited from this peer visit. And uh, I will be more than happy to see after a couple of years that our recommendations were implemented and it's, it helped the system in general. Thank you, Karabash. Turning back to Stella. So. Earlier, a week ago, I had an interview with Ivan Mirkovic from, from Montenegro, and he was telling me his reflections from the other side as, as one of the hosting organizations. So I want to ask you, based on the experience of Moldova, what kind of advice can you give to a country that is still new in terms of building its educational structure and new in terms of uh, developing its quality assurance uh, systems? So based on the experience of Moldova, what kind of advice can you give? Um, so um, taking into account the fact that uh, actually quality assurance in vet education was completely new for our vet institutions back in uh, 2015. So um, uh, actually we, uh, uh, both the agency and at the ministry level, uh, came with uh, certain recommendations, for example, to establish within uh, uh, vet institutions some uh, quality assurance centers, yeah? so uh, which we trained uh, in regard to what is quality assurance in education. So what are the mechanisms, what are the tools to uh, ensure or to, to have a, an internal quality assurance, first of all. So uh, and then when, when they did this, when they built these structures, so they um, uh, had a, um, uh, always a communication with us. So um, we actually um, uh, had a communication with them on a daily basis. Yeah. So uh, and um, then we tried to provide them with some insight because uh, uh, 
external quality assurance was uh, uh, when you speak about internal quality assurance so, so there are some elements but you don't regard them as internal quality assurance at that moment but uh, when it comes to external quality assurance it was complete something completely uh, completely new and they interpreted it like uh, uh, this was uh, another kind of control so uh, and it took us some time actually uh, several years two or three years to um, 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 make or try to make a change in their mindset that uh, external quality assurance and internal quality assurance uh, are actually not uh, control mechanisms. So that they are uh, uh, there to help the institution to improve its processes. So that's why uh, the idea of external quality assurance is continuous improvement and enhancement of the education uh, 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 itself. And also um, uh, we encourage um, uh, both uh, uh, teaching staff from the institutions and uh, the um, labor market representatives to take active part in this uh, uh, in, in this process. So uh, both at the internal uh, level and at the external level. So that's why in you know, all our external evaluation procedures we involve, uh, um, for example, business representatives. So who are the uh, one of the main apart from the students, one of the main benefits of uh, of this uh, system. So and um, yeah, so I I would suggest that they. Um, try to um, build this trust between uh, the VET Center and the Bureau and uh, uh, the VET institutions and the business representatives. So make this triangulation of, um, of expertise and build this trust uh, and also ensure, ensure people uh, in the VET institutions and not, not only uh, about the importance of this um, activity of the external evaluation or an external quality assurance because it's actually uh, it should not be a punitive one so stressing what are the uh, weaknesses and what you are not doing good so because we all have some shortcomings we all uh, experience some weaknesses but uh, that the external evaluation should come and help the institution actually to progress and to to evolve uh, and do much better in uh, in the future so. thank you stella back to uh, I have two questions for you. The first one is, imagine that you are part of the organizing committee of one of the next quality assurance forums, and that, for example, Georgia would be the hosting country. So what would be the main key points to focus on from your own perspective? That's my first question. My second question is, what are the main policy outputs that you came up with from the Montenegro peer visit? Like I know every country has its own context and every country has its own conditions with a country in the Southern Mediterranean is definitely different from a country in the Balkans or in the on Asia. Of course, the systems are not the same, but generically speaking, broadly speaking, what would be the main uh, outputs that you would mainstream and communicate out of the Montenegro peer visit? That's my second question. Yeah, no. <clears throat> so thank you for these questions. And uh, uh, first is that uh, I don't think that I will uh, generally change the focus of the peer visit, uh, especially this is interesting in this context when country has uh, some tradition of external quality or internal when quality assurance mechanisms are there in place and uh, uh, as, as Stella, Stella just mentioned uh, it is about development it is not about co control uh, therefore uh, very important is that all decisions even advices provided uh, recommendations provided from external evaluators are more based on the evidences that is al already there and, and, and in face so it would be more effective that I would say uh, to focus on the issues, uh, what is not uh, a, 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 a new, something new, uh, new, newly introduced, where at least we have two, three, four years of experience to analyze. Uh, and uh, the second is to focus more, uh, which is very important on the, um, work-based learning approaches because uh, um, I have impression somehow that uh, 
um, mainly um, uh, even in the Eastern uh, partnership countries and Asian part of the countries, uh, involvement of the private sector in the vocational education and training as training providers uh, faces lots of problems and it's more school based approach uh, according to the information I have. So it, it would be very, very interesting to, to emphasize more on the work based learning approach, including dual education. Uh, I also saw that the uh, definition of dual education in Montenegro is very interesting. So uh, it's not the not about the term only how you define the dual education. Is this the real sense what is meant uh, under dual education with the uh, point of view of, of, of the original initiators? Yeah, this is more uh, ownership of the German uh, uh, cultural countries uh, from Germany. Uh, this is not about the training only, but uh, a student has uh, the employer status at the same time, and it is uh, essential part of the organization itself. So it will be very interesting focus. Uh, Work-based learning and dual education approaches, how is it implemented? And uh, this is the really a key to the success. Now, probably that's also uh, leads us to the very relevance of uh, Stella's proposal that maybe we involve more Estonian, more German colleagues in the uh, peer visits and experience where they have a very good and traditional, uh, let's say, you know, traditions in this kind of uh, the most successful vocational education and training approaches. Now, regarding the policy issue, um, um, uh, uh, I'm not really sure that I understood the question correctly, but uh, uh, my question, my qu my question is, what are the main policy outputs, or maybe legislative outputs, whatever whatever you see fitting, that you would love to mainstream, that you would love to implement across different contexts? Uh, for our country, based on the. Yeah. Maybe based on in Georgia in the Georgian context, or maybe in the European context in general. Actually, based on the experience we just said in Montenegro, uh, 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 I, um, first the mainstream on the on the policy level, I would say would be for uh, two two very important issues. First is that to eliminate eliminate the conflict of interest between implementing agencies, which is very very important, because the uh, a sense of the quality assurance itself says that they should. I should not be monitoring or or, or 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 controlling. This is the bad word, but monitoring of the processes I manage myself. So we observed it in Montenegro because same organization is providing trainings and development activities, and the same organization then is uh, uh, monitoring the process or assessing that, evaluating the process. So uh, if, if uh, this would be the first very important because it kills the quality assurance approach at the very beginning if, 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 this, is, if this is there. And second is that vocational education and training as it is misunderstood in the most cases does not belong only to the Ministry of Education, Ministries of Education and Science. This is 50-50 ownership of the business, private sector and Ministry of Education. Different cases, general education or higher education, when Ministry of Education is main policy maker. But if we want a successful vocational education and training, main policy issue should be a equal, uh, let's say, ownership from the business and from the Ministry of Education. And it would be very good if they, uh, if, if, if they um, manage this system, make the policy in this system uh, together. Yeah. Thank you, Kohaber. That's very comprehensive. Now turning to Stella. I promise this would be my last two questions to you, Stella. So you both, my first question, you both refer to the importance of engaging external actors. Like you said, the importance of uh, involving external social actors or social players in the evaluation process. And also Kohaber said something about the involvement of private sector. So I'm asking you how difficult or how challenging this process might be, because in many cases across many countries, most of those working in the ministries, in the governmental entities, 
you know, Stella, they have this kind of allergy. They are not that open to receiving feedback from external actors like civil society organizations, for example, or practitioners or uh, those working in academia, for example. So how do you overcome these challenges? That's my first question. And my second question, and hopefully the last, because I promised you I won't take much time of your uh, much of your time. My second question is when it comes to agreeing on the next peer visit, how the consultation goes inside the quality assurance forum, like why, for example, the next country would be Montenegro, not Moldova, not Georgia. Why Tunisia in specific? Like how the decision making takes place from behind the scenes. OK, just answering the first question. So uh, uh, when we speak about the rep uh, representatives of the uh, private sector, so the um, representatives of the um, civil society. social civil society, the representatives of the business sector, so we call them differently, but in one word, it's uh, uh, the engagement of stakeholders. So uh, the stakeholders who are actually uh, the ones who are uh, interested in the quality of education, so who are the main benefits from this quality. So these are, if we speak about that, uh, these are also the parents that uh, want their children to get high quality education. These are the children, the students who uh, have their own expectations. This is the labor market representatives who also have their requirements with regard to the skills or to the competencies that uh, these um, students in the end have to acquire in a study program that they uh, receive there in the uh, VET sector. This is the civil society uh, or the taxpayers who, who pay the taxes and, uh, uh, and in this case, uh, uh, the institution, the, the government has to be um, um, publicly uh, were publicly accountable to these people. So to, to, to share, uh, to, to show what uh, and how is this uh, money from tax uh, spent. So, uh, and involving uh, the stakeholders um, actually is a great issue. Um, I, I, I think everywhere. So it's very difficult to, to involve uh, people, uh, especially take them from the business sector to uh, be part of the external evaluation process, for example, as part of experts in expert panels, or to involve them uh, in drafting your methodologies, to involve them in drafting your procedures, or uh, drafting uh, some quality standards that you want to apply and criteria and indicators. Uh, but uh, the I, I think that uh, um, uh, actually to be at least a little bit successful in this um, um, desire, let's say. So you have to approach them uh, personally. So you have to speak to the people to explain uh, why is that good? Why do we need, why we need you in this process? How will you benefit or uh, in a, let's say not in a very short term, but uh, in a long term from, from this? So, um, this is okay, okay. I understand that you're talking from the governmental perspective that we need to approach external actors. No, I'm talking from uh, from uh, from uh, the um, perspective of a quality assurance agency. Definitely. So okay. yeah, which is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, under I understand your yeah. point, but but sometimes we and that's due to also Kakhaber. I want to to know your input about this. Sometimes it's the problem is on the governmental side. Like yes, my, there might be some uh, some problems on the private sector side or the civil society. They are not willing to to participate or get involved or get engaged. But sometimes it's on the other side. Like government is not willing to accept whatever feedback or that the process of policy making itself is not representative. It's not participatory. If I may, if I may say so. So that was something that I I also need to to hear your input about. So uh, actually, I don't know from uh, the point of, uh, of ministry, for example, but um, uh, as I told you, um, actually in our uh, activity, so uh, the, um, the stakeholders are very important. So they are really, really important. L let me just give you uh, an example uh, when they take part um, as experts in expert panels. So they act there with equal rights. 
So they go through all the details of the study programs of the institution. They provide their feedback and we rely very much on their feedback. The institutions rely very much on their feedback, especially from if there is a, representatives of, a representative of the labor market. So it builds this connection between labor market and uh, uh, the vet institution. So it's very important for them to have their feedback, to have the insight from, uh, from the labor market. So, and uh, as I mentioned, they are on the equal, uh, on the equal side. So it's not that one uh, member of the expert panel is more important than the other one and uh, um, uh, expresses uh, his own opinion uh, and own feedback. So we okay. take them seriously. So from our point of view, so we, we actually take them seriously. Moving to the second question, Stella. <laughs> uh, yeah, to the, the second the, question. Yes, but regarding how, how you pick up the, the countries. Actually, uh, uh, I, uh, we didn't, uh, or at least I uh, haven't been involved in picking up the countries. Uh, and as far as I know, it's a benevolent uh, activity. So it's not something that today we are going to, or this year we are going to uh, conduct a peer visit in a specific country, one, two, three, please choose from, uh, from among these countries. So it's mostly, mostly on a benevolent manner. So depending on the issues the countries have and that they want the feedback from the uh, peer experts. So it's usually a request from the from the country yeah. itself. No. Okay. No. So so participants or members of the quality assurance forum they do not push for no. a specific country or no. Lovely. That's something that it, that was very At important. Least we haven't <laughs> noticed anything like that. <laughs> that was something very important to focus on. Khaber, I'm, I'm done, but I, I just want to hear if you have any insights on the involvement of the private sector, because you said something about that, but I'm done. Um, yeah, thank you. Actually, this uh, it's a great challenge and it takes time uh, to ensure the, the, the high level involvement of the private sector and business representatives. Um, according to our approach, which was uh, introduced seven years ago in our country, uh, we really opened doors widely to the private sector within the vocational education, starting with the policy drafting because we had uh, a, a special committee where private sector representatives were there at the policy level to elaborate the policy issues and to implement. Uh, actually, they are uh, represented in the um, uh, curricula development uh, level. Uh, we have uh, national level curricula, which is mandatory to to be then adopted by education institutions, but main framework is defined national wide. So they are involved there. They are involved and very well welcomed on the implementation level to participate, to participate in the program implementation. They are involved in the decision making since in our country uh, decision about whatever caused licensing, we call it authorization of the institution. Authorization uh, Council consists only private sector representatives and they make decisions about the validity of institution and their programs. And even more now we are at the stage to introduce the mandatory qualification examinations, which will be held only by the private sector representatives. Therefore, lead by lead gradually. This, this is not we actually want finally. We want their more active participation but gradually it takes uh, years and it took several years that until we reach this moment now. This is not satisfactory, as I mentioned. We want more, we expect more from the private sector, but little by little they come in. Actually, pandemic period damaged this process because uh, uh, businesses had big challenges between uh, during the last two years of pandemic and they had to tear or take care of their own business and success. and. Uh, 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 they did not care about involvement in the education. This is also normal and essential, but little by little since business develops, they, they see their benefits. Now about the ministry, if ministry has no willingness uh, to accept private sector participation, then nothing will happen. This should be the policy level decision. And ministry has to come to the conclusion, as I mentioned before, that vocational education and training does not belong to the Ministry of Education, does not belong to the government. It is more about private sector and business development support. 
if 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 uh, political politicians uh, understand it well, then may they make uh, proper uh, steps to uh, uh, make incentives for the businesses to uh, open doors widely to the private sector. Yeah, this is this is my impression. Thank you so much for these very useful insights. I put in the chat uh, an article that we published like a couple of weeks ago before the peer visit took place. Uh, and we are planning to do another article based on this interview, as well as the interview I have conducted earlier with Ivan Merkovic from the from Montenegro. So hopefully in the week or two to come, hopefully within this month of June, we are publishing it in open space, which I'm sure you are part of. So yes, I'm open to any questions that you might have. I'm done. Yeah, thank you for, for inviting us. And it was a real pleasure to take part in this discussion and share, share, uh, share our experience. Thank you, Stella, for your time. Yeah. And thank you, Kapapur, for the very- yeah, Thank you, uh, uh, Mahmoud, for Ahmed. this uh, excellent facil facilitation. And you are a very good journalist, I think. Uh, <laughs> is, 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 is it your uh, uh, profession? Yeah. I'm working, yes, in the strategic communication department in ETF. And I really hope to get to see you face-to-face, uh, -face, not virtually, not through Microsoft okay. Teams, because Stella said something at the very beginning about face-to-face -face communication and how, how lively it is compared to uh, online communication. Thank you so much. It is very good. Yeah. I wish you from the best of my heart. They are very I good. Say, I will take a chance to say, say to Stella, yes, uh, Stella, thank you very much. And uh, I'm really glad that Montenegro and this face-to-face -face visit made our <laughs> Georgian uh, Moldovan initiatives. Uh, we started to work on the mutual agreement on the cooperation in the quality. Yeah, uh, we already finished drafting this, and in a couple of days you will receive from our side our memoranda, and then I think we will proceed of official signing of this. Okay, this is also the result of Montenegro uh, peer visit. Yeah. Interesting news. <laughs> Thank you both. No, uh, this is how uh, these kind of events, like can I, as I mentioned, can link or create bridges between different yes. nations and cultures and systems. Yes, so it's not just it's, it's not just means Stella for for feedback and and peer learning, however important, but also for mm -hmm. connections and and networking as well. So yeah, that's the aim out of it. Enjoy the rest of your days, and mm -hmm. thank you. Thank Have you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.